hearts in Jesus' name. I'm speaking on countdown and calculates. And from the sentence we projected, when we were written and we're saying hello to one another, we were, if we, we missed the calculation between the F's, the number of F's. A lot of us missed it. Why? Because there was a lot of distraction, a bit of greeting, a bit of this and that. So we were not able to focus. And because we were not able to focus, we missed the number of F's there. That's just an exercise for you to uh, understand what the Holy Spirit is about to talk to us uh, about this morning. So when you sit down and you paid attention, you were calm, you were able to count, you were able to see, you were engaged almost all your faculties to be able to give me the right answer. So when I asked for six, a lot of us shouted six because we had concentrated. To calm down is to be calm, to be relaxed, and to have less activity. To calm down is to be calm, to relax, and to have less activity. And to calculate is to make estimate of. Now I want to plead with you that you follow me with your hearts as we go on in this uh, session, because I trust somehow God is going to say something to you that will lay a good foundation for you in the year 2019 in Jesus' name. So you're wondering, how can calm down and calculate be relevant to the month of new beginning? New beginning talks about starting afresh and we are still in the new year. And that is why I want to uh, reinforce a bit on what we spoke about uh, the first Sunday of the year, so that we build on from there and see how far God will take us this year. I know God will take you and I very far in the mighty name of Jesus. So you will recall last year that uh, last uh, two weeks ago I was talking about you uh, setting goals that it's very important that you have goals uh, for the year, and I believe that every one of us has goals, now, including our children. Am I right? If you don't have a goal yet, you are. Don't play with this year, amen. Don't play with this year. It's very, very important. So today is the 20th day of January 2019, and this is nearly three weeks into the year. Tomorrow is going to be exactly three weeks, uh, 49 uh, weeks plus one day we have now. So it's important for you to have your goal by now. And if you don't have it, it is not too late to quickly do something today before uh, you are talking about June and then it's October and then it's December again. Now, the question is, how are you sticking to your goals so far? Or are some of us falling off already? You have your goals, you wrote them, wrote them down, but today is two weeks, six days. Are you falling off your goals already? Or you are still maintaining the pace? This is why I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to sit down, to calm, to be calm, and to calculate. You will see in the teachings of Jesus, in the book of Luke chapter 14, verses 28 to 30, Luke chapter 14, verses 28 to 30, that there are a few things that we can learn. One of them is that there is need. Can I have Luke chapter, thank you, we have it already. Uh, Luke chapter 14 verses 28 to 30. So we see from the first things that Jesus said there is that there is a need for a goal. So you could have the intention. What is the intention? To build a tower. So an individual, yourself, myself, every one of us, we are meant to have uh, an intention to have something we plan to do. Then the next thing there is that Jesus was talking about to sitting down, which is talking about planning. And then the need for you to count the cost. That is calculation. And then why you need to do this, the benefits for you. That is highlighted in verse 30. 
Now let's say an individual have an intention of building a tower. From the faces of people I'm looking at this afternoon, I don't see people that are planning to build a tower. But I see people that want to probably buy a new house. I see people that want to change their cars. I see people that want to renovate their homes. I see people that want to live healthy and stay healthy. I see people that want to further on in their academic pursuits. I see people that want to, at the end of the year, have a lot of savings because they have caught off the waste. Am I right? So those are the people I'm talking to. I'm not talking to somebody who is building a tower. If you want to build a tower, that's all good. As long as it lines up with your goal. Amen. So God is talking to you. God is talking to me. Every time you're able, God is talking to me. Amen. I know that once you are, when you are planning, when you were planning your goal, I hope sincerely that there is none of us that says, because I've eaten the good of the land and I've added a bit of a, a few pounds, that my goal is to change my wardrobe altogether to just buy new clothes. If that is your goal, I think you need to rethink your goal because you might your goal may be adjusted to maybe something like losing a few pounds so that you can fit into those clothes. Amen. So if your goal, like I said, is probably to uh, change your wardrobe, it may not be a good goal. So I want you to make sure that your goals are derived from God. It's only God that can give you new good goals. Amen. So check your uh, goals and be sure that it lines up with the word of God. Do I have an amen to that? That's very crucial. If you are thinking of changing your wife, I don't think that's a good goal. <laughs> amen. Now that's likely to be a goal that you know, it will be a bit controversial. Hallelujah. But you are thinking of changing your who you are. So what I'm trying to say is that your goals must be derived from the word of God. And that is very important. So we see somebody planning to build a, a, a tower there. So that's a good goal. And you have your goals, like I said. Uh, but, you know, when we go back to the teaching of Jesus, there is something that Jesus said. And that is very important. I want you to come line by line with me to the book of uh, Luke chapter 14 from verse 28. The Bible says, For which of you, intending to build a tower, that is talking about your goal, sit, set not down first. The first thing, once you have identified your goal, is to what? Sit down. And I'm happy to see people that are seated except the ushers. Hallelujah. So you sit down first. Why is it important for you to sit down? When you sit down, you are more relaxed. Amen. When you sit down, you are more focused. When you sit down, your distractions are removed. You see, when we were standing up and greeting one another, you were looking for the next person to greet. So you were not paying attention to uh, what I had offered you. Praise the name of the Lord. But when you sat down, you were able to focus on the details of that sentence. And you were able to pick for me the six F's in that sentence. So there is need for you to sit down and be calm. There is need for you to sit down and be calm. Say that enough. There is need for you and I to sit down. Today is the third week. Is nearly finishing in the month of January. With all your busyness, are you not falling off of your goals already? The reason is because you are not calm. You are just everywhere. There is need. The Bible says. I know that I am God. There is power in being still. There is power in being calm. That is why you see people go to the wall, uh, to the to the park, and they just take a walk around and they look for somewhere very, uh, very cool, very calm.
them where there are less distractions and they begin to meditate. Calmness. Tell your neighbor, be calm. So Jesus is saying that once you have identified your goals, the next thing you must do is to sit down. And once you sit down, then you are able to come to a plan. What are the, this is my goal. How do I achieve this goal? So you begin to plan, you begin to strategize, you begin to add one to one and say, this is where I'm going, this is how I'm going to get there. You see, I get texts occasionally from John's manager and he texts me maybe on a, Saturday, on a Friday night, texts all the parents that there's going to be a match tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. in a place that is unknown to me. You know what I do with that text once I receive it? I go and check the address. I Google. I map out. Now, once I know the time it's going to take me to get there, knowing the time to wake up and to get ready becomes easy. I have. I now know that this is where I'm going. This is my destination. Now I know that this is the fastest route to get me there. So knowing that I have to be there by nine makes me know that I have to wake up maybe two hours early, three hours early, or one hour early, depending. So when I'm able to manage that effectively, I can get into the place on time. So planning is what I'm going to be talking about for a few minutes, and I'm going to talk about, I'm going to be talking about how you do your calculations. Praise the name of the Lord. If you are with me, shout hallelujah. A lot of us are not here. If you are with me, shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. For example, if your goal is to pay off your debts, you have debts on your credit card, overdraft debts, you have taken some loans, you have not repaid it, uh, you, you just see that your finances has been in a mess by the end of 2018. And you told yourself, I'm going to, this year, I'm going to get this sorted. I'm not going to go into 2020 with any of this, uh, any of these debts. That's a good goal, isn't, isn't that? Okay? So the next thing, you said, I'm going to increase my hours at work. I'm going to work for extra money so that I can pay off my debts. Isn't that a good plan? Is it? But I love the line. This is January. You are looking forward to next week now to get your paycheck. And then an uncle calls and says somebody is sick and they need to pay hospital bill. That's very good, isn't it? Is it part of your plan? No? Okay. Amen. Or somebody calls you from city center and says they are doing this. It's to to you, to to you. Is that part of your plans? And is it not good to buy to to you? Answer me, people of God. Is it not good to ask to, to buy the 2 two euro thing? It is good because it's cheap, isn't it? But now, that would take you away from your goal. The, uh, the uncle that is sick, whether they get you or not, he will not die. I said your uncle will not die. Amen. Amen. I'm not teaching you to be mean. I'm teaching you to stay with your plans. It's very important. Otherwise, everything will come against your plans, I can guarantee you. That will distract you and take you away from your goal. I can say that. Immediately you set a godly goal, the devil goes on a rampage to see how he can distract you and make you lose focus and do something other than focus on what you have intended to do. Hallelujah. So, Jesus said, once you have marked your goal, sit down, be calm, and begin to have strategy. Of course, this can be what will differentiate between the winners and the losers in 2019. It 
can mark the difference between the successful and the failure at the end of this year. This thing I'm talking about can determine whether you are going to end this year in joy or with so many regrets. It can be the determining factor for you to have a year of glory or a year of misery. So I need you to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you because it can be the most important message that you will hear this year. Amen. Amen. So let's go a little bit further. Let's say your goal is to live healthy and to stay healthy. What are your plans? Let's just take that as a case study. Your plans may include, I'm going to stay off fizzy drinks, alcohol, God forbid, if anybody smokes air, but smoke as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, you know the story of the prof that, that Jew said smokes, and every time he says that the Jew will just quickly quench the fire. Amen. So, you said, I'm going to take a lot of water. That is good. You said, I'm going to go on regular exercise. I'm going to have regular exercise. I'm talking about your strategy to achieving your goal. I'm going to register in the gym and go maybe twice or three times a week and I'm going to be consistent with that. That is part of the strategy. I'm going to eat a lot of fruits and veg. And they are saying to us now that eating meat is polluting our environment. Amen. Did you hear the news? And the research have told us now that you know if you are eating too much meat, you are contributing to the reason why we are having too much snow and too much heat. So it might be good for you to stay a little away from uh, 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 meat and poultry and stick more to uh, fruit and veg. Anyway, it's good for you. Amen. So that's a good plan towards attend, uh, achieving your goal. You might decide that I'm going to go more, maybe I'm over 35. I will make sure that once in a year, I, I go to my GP to send me for routine blood tests. So that, you know, once they are able to see anything in advance, it's manageable, it's more manageable. Uh, maybe I'm going to maintain an healthy weight. You know, I'm just going to make sure that after 6 p.m. or maybe, you know, 5 p.m. or for some of us, it's, you know, 5 p.m. is too late, uh, it's too early. Maybe after 6 p.m., I will just do only water and fruit. You know, all these things will help you to achieve your goal. Amen. So when you stick to this routine, and somebody calls you or you want to visit around 8 p.m., and they made you your favorite elusive with Pandetian, because it does not line up with your goal, it's easy for you to say, no, thank you. And I'm not saying for those of us that are fasting, you have to uh, eat at 2 p.m. because you want to maintain your size. You know, spiritual exercise is also very important. But you can make sure you break immediately after 6 and don't leave it till 11 p.m. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our Lord. So what I'm trying to say is that now you have a planned strategy. This is my goal. And this is how I plan to achieve my goal. And you cannot do this until you sit down and look at your goal. Be calm. Get into yourself. Connect with your inner man and see step by step how to do this. I didn't say this. It was Jesus. But I believe he said it to help every one of us have a new beginning. Praise the name of our Lord. So, this makes you responsible for your health. Once you have done all these things, you become responsible for how you live your life in 2019, which is very, very important. Now, it is not enough to make these decisions. It is very, very important for you to manage your decisions. I'm going to go to that in a bit. But let me talk about the calculation. You know, the Bible says, For which of you intending to build a tower, set it not down first and count it, the cost. That is the maths, the mathematics of your goal. 
how do I achieve this? What are the things I have to do or the things I have to take away, minus or plus, addition or subtraction, multiplication, whatever I need to do to achieve this goal. Now, sometimes, you know, the, the moment you hear maths, you tune off. It's not that simple. It's not that um, bad. The fact that you made F9, <laughs> amen, in your living start doesn't make you a bad mathematician. You're just good in some other areas. Hallelujah. There are people that are very good in math like me. Hallelujah. Don't worry, don't worry. I just know that there are some of us that when you hear the word math, oof. If you are driving, if you are a driver, you are doing a bit of calculation, don't you know? Amen. You calculate your way. It's okay. Can I enter the junction now? Okay. You are doing a bit of calculation in your head. If you are a housewife and people are not getting hungry in the home because there is nothing, you are good. You are good at math, but you are good at calculation. Amen. So you do math every day of your life in little things, in big things. But sometimes you don't realize that we are doing math. So let's come back to the math. Counting the cost. Somebody say counting the cost. Now, you will know that in mathematics, if you get one sum wrong, Pastor Kola will correct me. You are going to get the answer wrong, sir. Okay. Because I had, I had planned, I had prepared my message. And last night in the middle of the night, as I was praying, the Holy Spirit gave me another direction. I said, God, how do I do this? So I have no time to consult Pastor Kola to check if I, so if I, if there is any error, just forgive me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So, if you get one of the songs wrong, you are going to get your answer wrong. It doesn't matter what you do right in between. And that is why this calculation is extremely important. Remember, be calm, and calculate. You will see that mathematicians are people that are very calm, very composed. They have to get their head into it. So you have to get your head into the calculation and say, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. This is not how to do it. This is what I have to do. This is what I have to take away. This is what I have to add to things to make it work. If you listen to the news, Prince Philip, the husband of Victoria in Victoria, I had an accident on Thursday. We were told it was a, you know, it was a collision. Uh, somebody along the line was have miscalculated, yeah? Because it was at a junction. So there was a miscalculation. If you miscalculate, you're going to end the year 2019 in a crash. Amen. If you don't calculate properly, this year will end in a crash. May it not be that for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is a place of prayer. God is not an irresponsible God. He gave you responsibility. You are eating anyhow. You are sleeping anyhow. You are not watching your head. And they say there is a sickness. They say, go for me, go for me. <laughs> you better pay attention. Amen. It's, big, it's bigger than God forbid. You have to get your head into it. Praise the name of our Lord. So if you get any of the songs wrong, you are likely to get the whole uh, uh, answer wrong along the line. So you must be able to calculate. And this is where management comes in. Somebody say management. Management, management is very, very important. Once you have your goal, and you have your plans on how to achieve your goal, then management is the key to success. Management is the key to success. So if you are going to be successful in 2019, it's, it depends on how you manage. You have your plans, you have your goals. That's beautiful. But how you manage along the line is extremely important. You know, John Maxwell said, everything begins with decisions. Successful people make right decisions early like you in January or maybe towards the end of last year and manage those decisions daily. Tell your neighbor is a daily thing. Amen. They make decisions early 
and they manage the decisions daily. You make your decision before or later by now. And then the responsibility is on you every day to manage those decisions. If you don't manage it well, you are not likely, it's not a prayer thing. You are not likely to finish the way you are supposed to finish. And management involves discipline. Somebody say discipline. discipline. I said discipline. discipline. Amen. It takes a lot of discipline to sit down early in the morning, once in a week, and go over your goals. A lot of discipline. Because a lot of things want to distract you. You are tired, you are calling for 6 a.m. prayer. You didn't sleep until 12 midnight. And then you have to wake up at 5. You know, it can, it can get a bit uh, too much for you. But you need to be able to manage your decisions before you can achieve your goals. Extremely important. If you keep failing, you are likely to fail at the end. May you not fail at the end in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, may you not fail at the end in Jesus' name. Amen. So you have to have ways of measuring how you are doing. That is your management. You can start with, if it's uh, your finance. I, I was listening to Andy Stanley the other day. And he said something that blessed me. Somebody might want to do it. He said that, you know, every resource that God has given you is given for you too. It's given to you on steward. God gave it to you. Everything you have, God gave to you. And when it's time for you to give account, He expects you to be able to give Him account of what you did with what He gave. So, for example, He gave you money. If you can take a piece of paper and discipline yourself to write down every spending, every cent, every, every, every euro that you spend, you'll be amazed at the result you will get. You won't need anybody to tell you what you will not buy and what you will buy. Just the discipline alone you know, of writing down. And you know that a lot of us will miss in that discipline. You go to the supermarket, my children tell me, Mom, you said you want to buy two things. I end up with a trolley. What are two things and they truly got in common? Lack of discipline. Amen. Lack of discipline. If I go there and I plan and I have it noted that I'm buying two things, and I go there, I buy the milk, I buy the sugar, and I go up, nobody will arrest me. I said, why didn't you look around? Why didn't you see all these things that we have? Nobody will stop me. But if I lack the restraint, after the sugar, after the milk, I will look at bread as ah, this is fresh. Brenner's bread, today's bread. Oh, how does it? <laughs> Market is going. Bread today for? Ah, Pastor, I know you do better. Amen. What is my business with Brenner today's bread today? Who says I cannot eat yesterday's bread today? If the bread I had was from yesterday, I can microwave it. And then it becomes yesterday's bread today. Yeah. Try it. <laughs> Try it if you, if, you, if you don't know. It's good. It tastes fresh. I have something in the house. It's called uh, oven fryer or air fryer. That thing, you can take it from freezer, it becomes fresh. I'm telling you. So you don't have to look for today's bread today. Use two days ago's bread today in a sophisticated way. By the time you garnish it, it will become fresh. Amen. Management is important. When you write it down, it makes it clear. So you are saying the money I'm getting is not enough. The money I'm getting is not enough. You know, I spoke about it's not about activity, it's about productivity. The money 
if you save is not enough, if you manage well, you'll be amazed that you will have savings. But a lot of times, the cause may lack that management and the discipline it entails. Then we mismanage God's resources and God is not happy. So when you say, God bless me, God bless me, God bless me, God says, I blessed you yesterday. The hundred euro I gave to, to you yesterday, you went to Max and Spencer, you finished it. Amen. Say a big amen. amen. When you get home today, I want to give you a homework. When our children were there in school, when they come back, they bring homework that will last them at least one hour. So I want to give you one hour homework. Are you ready to write it down? your goals again. If you don't have a goal, write your goal. Write your goal. I cannot say that enough. You must write it down. After you have written it, it doesn't matter, it can be ten, it can be only one. Then sit down, go to for a walk in the park. When there are no children, it's a big boy, don't be with Dami and Lola Day. Go alone. Amen. Go somewhere and sit down and plan. I want to save 10,000 euros at the end of 2019. This is my goal. How can I achieve it? I normally do my shopping in Dolls and Tesco. God help me. And I found that there are cheaper brands in Lidl or Aldi. I switch. Forget about that card they gave you. At the end of the year, they are likely to give you five euro or ten euro of your shopping that you can save in a cheaper shop in one go. So, how do I want to manage? How do I want my plan? How do I want to do it? Step by step. That discipline is extremely important. Then, after you have done that, you want to now say to yourself, how am I going to make myself responsible for this goal? That is management. How am I going to manage it? How am I going to make sure that I stick to the plan no matter the, the situation? Eventually, you may need to reveal, maybe after a quarter, some things may need to be, you may need to adjust for some things. You might need to add, you might need to remove. You know yourself, what works for me may not work for you, but you must achieve your goal. I say you must achieve your goal. Amen. You have to achieve your goal. Imagine what will happen. When on the 31st of December, when we all come back to give glory to God, and you begin to look at where you planned to be and see where you are. Can you imagine the joy in your heart? Can you imagine how grateful you will be to God that you were able to stick to your plan? God will give you the, uh, the plan, the vision. He will give you the dream, but you are the one that will execute it. And how you execute it,